if you suffer from extensive hair loss extensive hair loss as is the case with me have you never coveted your friends your relatives or your colleagues hair and has it never crossed your mind of thinking of asking him for his hair for a transplant especially when you don't have a donor area available well this thought crosses the minds of almost all people who suffer from extensive baldness and who do not have the requisite amount of hair in their donor areas to cover the full head if doctors can transplant organs organs like liver kidney heart they must be able to transplant innocuous looking organs like a simple hair it sounds so simple the good news is that scientists are currently researching ways to transplant hair from one person to the another without rejection to know about this in detail whether hair transplant from one person to the other is possible or not hang on hair transplant is a cosmetic surgical procedure and as we know it today it is an auto transplant the bald person is his own donor the grafts or the hair that are to be transplanted necessarily are taken from the back and the sides of the hair and sometimes from bodily areas and transplanted into the bald areas organ transplants on the other hand like liver transplant heart transplant or kidney transplant are life saving procedures the donor for these organs is another genetically similar individual and hence it is an allotransplant hair transplants are often confused with organ transplants many patients who just have started to research about hair transplant are still not clear whether it is going to be another person's hair or your own hair so there are so many questions that patients ask when they have just started their hair transplant research a recent story in new york times titled scientists are teaching the body to accept new organs narrates the ongoing research in the field of organ transplant and it briefly touched upon the removal of dendritic cells which are the chief cells in initiating the immune response the immune response of rejection can the same thing be done for hair transplant well if the research of dr osong kwon of the national university hospital of seoul succeeds it probably will dr kwon with his team in seoul is working on allogenic hair transplant transplant without the need for immunosuppressants well this could be a huge leap in hair transplant surgery a huge breakthrough in a field which is going back retrogressively into using magic lotions and potions it's been a long time since there's been an advancement in the field of hair loss and hair transplant dr kwon's work involves removal of dendritic cells from the donated follicles with a surmise that if there are no dendritic cells there will be no initiation of the immune response and hence no rejection of the hair that are donated from one person to the other at the same time in pittsburgh in usa work is underway in modifying a different immune cell the regulatory dendritic cell like the regulatory t cell this cell enables the immune system to differentiate self from non self these advances could revolutionize organ transplant and as a by product the field of hair transplant surgery especially for higher grades of baldness and in those with diffuse patterns of baldness where the donor area is limited will benefit immensely this research is very exciting exciting because exciting. the donor will no longer be a barrier in coverage the donor will be limitless you can have as many grafts as many grafts can be donated to cover your bald area as you wish but currently the only way to prevent rejection of transplanted organs is to silence the immune system of the recipient by using immunosuppressants and immunosuppressants can be harmful though we may accept immunosuppressants when life is at stake like in an organ transplant a heart transplant liver transplant and a kidney transplant hair transplant is a cosmetic procedure so we need to weigh the benefits and the risks of using immunosuppressants for transplanting somebody else's hair the use of immunosuppressants comes bundled with hazardous side effects like kidney failure cancer infection high cholesterol accelerated heart disease and even diabetes and the talk of using immunosuppressants in hair transplant is just mere rhetoric because a hair loss sufferer till today detests the use of even an innocuous drug like finasteride for as short a period as 6 months after hair transplant is he going to use immunosuppressants for life so this question of using immunosuppressants and making a hair transplant hair being taken from another donor is ridiculous ridiculous because our current knowledge of suppressing the immune system without the use of immunosuppressant drugs is still lacking so we do not want to play around with our immune system 
by using immunosuppressants unless we really have to. And hair transplant is not an indication in which immunosuppressants should be given because of the grave side effects that the use of these drugs entails. As hair loss sufferers, we are not in a life or death situation after all. So allogenic hair transplants, that is hair transplants where the hair is taken from another individual and placed in another is not even considered with today's level of medical knowledge and advancement. So let's wait for another five years and see this field emerge. Emerge to benefit many hair loss sufferers who are at wit's end to find areas in the body which will act as hair donors. Till then, the terms donor hair and donor follicles will continue to refer to your own self. You will continue to be your own donor. And this, in medical parlance, is referred to as autotransplant. Till such time, Professor Kwon's work on the depletion of dendritic cells from donated follicles is published and peer-reviewed. I would rather take these initial reports with a pinch of salt. Experiments on mice have seldom, if ever, translated into results in human beings. Besides this, it will be very challenging for a hair transplant practice to assimilate the techniques of cellular manipulation in their practice because most hair transplant practices are office practices. Additionally, donor hair, that is hair from another person, are of a different and variable texture and color. The quality is different. It may not blend in well with uh, the recipient's hair, but if you have extensive baldness, say like grade 6 and 7, then it has tremendous value. So till this research sees the light of day and clinical application is possible, very sadly, hair transplant using someone else's hair, even from a close relative, is well nigh impossible. Our immune system immediately recognizes the hair follicles as foreign bodies and ruthlessly attacks them. Their growth would be nipped in the bud even before they have a chance to take root. Only if you have an identical HLA matched twin will this be possible. And how many of us, how many of us who suffer from hair loss have identical twins? The human immune system is a highly evolved and complex system that fends off disease and rejects foreign bodies. The immune system also continues to evolve by learning. Every cell in the body has a recognizable identity marker, which the immune system recognizes as self or non-self. Now you may say that hair is a dead tissue. So how does the body recognize it? Well, the hair shaft may be a collection of dead cells, but the root or the follicle is definitely a living thing. And it is the root that we transplant, not the hair. The root once implanted gets in touch with the bloodstream of the recipient and if foreign, initiates a cascade of immune events. In addition, the body starts to produce antibodies against the new cells, which causes the foreign hair follicles to fall out even faster. This also happens in the case of transplant of synthetic hair. On the other hand, when an organ transplant is done, say for example a liver transplant, the foreign liver is not rejected because we place the patient on immunosuppressant drugs for a long, long period of time and this prevents rejection. Though this is uh, beneficial to the process of organ transplant, it makes the uh, recipient become susceptible to disease and even cancer since the body's defense mechanism is silenced. So why don't we suppress the immune system when we are doing a hair transplant? A hair transplant from one person to the other because this is a cosmetic surgery procedure and not a life or limb saving emergency. Compromising your health is not medically acceptable and even if we theoretically place the patient on immunosuppressant drugs, there is still a chance that the implanted hair from another person will be rejected, like happens in some cases of liver and kidney transplants. So yes, hair can be transplanted from one person to the other, but with the present status of medical knowledge, they will not survive. Well, thank you for watching and if you have any question, any question that comes to your mind about hair loss, about hair transplants and specifically about transplantation of one person's hair into the other person's head, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer. Do subscribe to my channel and please like the video if you did. Thank you for watching and God bless you.